Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Ball Games. Here we have Kenton, fresh off of a top eight of SCG Baltimore, wearing off against Aiden, a young up and coming player. Been playing Legacy, pre modern, Popper really enjoying the eternal formats that we have to offer. Drew from WPI. Great to see significant improvements and this video is likely going to help a bit there there's going to be some interesting decision points and as i watched the game i was thinking man like that is not how i would have played it let's see how it goes and uh, it'll be fun for everyone to take a look and learn from it we've got fable of the mirror breaker one of the incredible new cards that's come out in the last few years i mean this does it all Creates a body, mana acceleration, card selection, and then once it flips, a potential uh, and the upside is just virtually unlimited. Especially like you could get two of these. Note that this is not a legendary Kiki Jiki. This is just a reflection of Kiki Jiki. And we are in the danger zone here with a Goblin Welder and a Grindstone in play at any point. Painter Servant could just wrap this whole thing up. And Orcish Bowmaster. Anything with a tiny butt needs to look out for this guy. Oh, and a Bowmaster back. Bowmaster Battles. Still going to get the Orc Army as a 1-1. One -one. Not going to be inconsequential. And then grinding himself to try and have an opportunity to further respond. Could have gotten interesting. Board largely cleared up. This Fable of the Mirror Breaker copying Orcish Bowmaster. Not a bad ETB to continually trigger, grow that Orc army while pinging. Oh, and look at this. Orcish Bowmaster again. It is one of the things that I'm, I'm not super excited about with Orcish Bowmaster is the propensity for it to be the best answer to itself. Those types of gameplay are not necessarily the most fun over the long haul. Mental misstep countering other mental missteps, for example. But I think at two mana, it's going to end up being just fine. It is creature removal. There is an upside, but you pay for that upside the cost of two mana, which even from a historic perspective is a decent amount of mana for removal we have a lot of access to one and even three creature removal you know swords to plowshares setting that gold standard since alpha in 93 but now things like solitude and snuff out this is a little slap fest here Tiny creatures going back and forth. Not really what both decks are designed to do. Painter, of course, looking to combo off. Shadow looking to get some big, beefy creatures down and close things out. Decks, I would imagine, would be somewhat evenly matched. Just in the abstract, Painter Servant does have access to Pyroblast and Reblast. He'll keep Murktides at bay. However, Death Shadow is a real problem on his own. More Bowmasters. Guys really getting their use out of this new Lord of the Rings card. Uh, double Days. Trying to keep Kenton's board clear. And now a Murktide. As I was saying before, Death Shadow is a little difficult for a deck like Painter to remove unless, of course, they get a Painter down. And Pyroblast and Red Blast become incredibly good cards as they can destroy or counter anything for the most part. I 
only drawback with naming blue to allow your opponent to pitch non-blue cards to force of will, force of negation, which comes up. You enjoy pitching a land to force a will in those situations. I'll spell bomb. A bit late. A necessary inclusion in Painter, as if you do run up against a deck that runs Emrakul, you're going to have a really hard time winning if you don't have a copy of Nile Spellbomb or Tormod's Crypt, something along those lines to exile your opponent's graveyard with that shuffle trigger on the stack. Back and forth, very close battle. This Delver threatening lethal next turn. This Orcish army. Trades two for one. Kenton's top card does not bail him out. So we are on to the next one. Aiden up a game. Skipping over the shuffling. Aiden eating on a basic mountain. Now a Goblin Engineer. This guy, like an extra Goblin Welder, a little bit tougher. Going to be welcome. Comes to not just dying immediately to Stiff Breeze or an Orcish Bowmaster. Oh, and another one. So now, let's see, we've got a... Brixian Dragon Engine, I think, is that first card. Either combo piece in the graveyard yet. Surgical Extraction is a card to consider when you're playing Painter. Either your Painter or Grindstone set you back, but with the inclusion of Karn, you can get combo piece from Exile. Tomb and City of Traders. So good in the Painter similar combo decks. It's this acceleration at such a low cost. And uh, noticeably not shut down by Null Rod, which shows up here. Force of Will stops another Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Aiden really restricting Kenton's resources here. Throws out a Orcish Bowmaster, end of turn. And another one. Really assembling four total damage over two cards. Not super exciting. And Fury mops that all up. Yikes. Fury. Pretty devastating there. A powder keg not exciting underneath your own null rod. You may put a counter. Is a nice triggered ability, so this can at least kind of get ready to to pop. It is a trigger, not an activated ability like Ratchet Bomb. So if Null Rod is taken care of, Powder Keg could still be activated after with a correct amount of counters on it. Death Shadow arriving. And get plus six plus six pretty easily with these fetch lands. A little bit of a concern of the life total. There are opposing orcish bowmasters. Don't want to go to one. Oh, Pyroblast takes out the Death Shadow as that painter servant is on board. Shadow, a difficult to deal with threat without the painter, but as you see, he makes everything blue. That is the whole point of the deck. 
Pyroblast. Very good once you've got the Painter on board. Merktide, on the other hand, would close this out pretty quickly. Like Aiden is considering whether or not he wants to fetch here. And the dragon engine coming back from the graveyard. Brixian dragon engine, double strike. Unearth it for five mana. Thing's going to come in, do four. Discard your hand and draw three. Not bad for an essentially uncounterable effect. For some newer players, Null Rod only stops activated abilities of artifacts on the battlefield. You can still unearth from the graveyard, still cycle artifacts from your hand. Just for those cards on the battlefield. Merktide. Really important here. Go Kent and answer it. We have a dress down. Stopping an ETB of a card that I'm actually not sure what it is. Let me know in the comments. In one take, so that'll get your comment right towards the top. Help fill everybody in. And, ooh, interesting. So Fury Evoked. No ETB, but also no need to sacrifice, thanks to the dress down. And it looks like Murktide couldn't swing. I guess this other creature has flying as well. And cycling a, another dress down. A very, very tense board state. Very low life totals. Chump blocking the Merc Tide. At the mystery card. Urza's Saga ready to make some constructs, though what it finds not necessarily going to be the most useful here. There is a Null Rod on board. Delver absorbs the damage from the Fury. And now Pyroblast takes out the Murktide. Rainstorm. The Pyroblast absolutely clutch. Oh, and another Murktide. What an absolute brawl this has been. Only one counter, however. For the Murktide, not a lot of instants and sorceries in there. Is enough to be lethal, though. Four damage in the air. Would do it. Three now, thanks to a fetch. So if this Delver flips, survives to the next turn, also do it. Rhinestone. And everything turns sideways. Clearing Aiden's board. Painter Grindstone still on board, but there's the Null Rod on the other side. Rainstorms, he's a orcish bowmaster. Hard cast, snuff out. Down to just one. Such a close match here. Looks like it's going to be down to the final point of damage. Bowmaster shows up. Kings down to two. 
thinking about which one he wants to lose. Losing the Bowmaster, keeping the Orcish army. Painter Servant dominating this battlefield. There's a massive 1 3 versus these 1 1s. And now, Vegas of the Moon, just a 2 2 to wrap it up. That is not how you draw it up. What a grindy game there. A lot of decisions. Some of the cards that we saw there for newer players, including that Magus of the Moon card that can be absolutely devastating. If that comes out early, turn one off of a Soul Land, City of Traders, or Ancient Tomb, along with any other acceleration, you know, Simeon Spirit Guide, Lotus Petal. There's plenty of ways to land this on the first turn, and those are going to be pretty lopsided games when you can land that on the first turn if your opponent doesn't have a basic land in their hand relying on fetch lands and dual lands i mean it's often just a wrap the red mana component even if they play red is often not going to be enough to get them out of that situation be kind of at its weakest in say the blue red delver matchup where they have lightning bolts to remove the magus in that case you'd rather have a blood moon enchantment much harder for them to remove but just in general, this non-basic lands becoming mountains, a huge hindrance for a sizable amount of legacy decks. Even monocolored decks like Death and Taxes can be frustrated by the card shutting off Wastelands, Rashad and Ports, Caracas. Occasionally land screwing them. I've actually seen that. I've, I've, very rare. They typically do have a basic planes, but sometimes they don't, and that is... Just horrifying when you're playing a monocolored deck. Totally shut out. Great furnace for Kenton. This is an artifact. Great synergy with Welder. Of course, has all the drawbacks of the rest of the artifacts being vulnerable to Null Rod, while also being vulnerable to Wasteland. Versus Saga. Such an incredibly powerful card. And really interesting too. Because you know Aiden could be sitting there with a whole bunch of counter spells. And Urza's Saga is potentially just going to play right through that. Representing lethal damage after just a couple of turns. Without even casting a spell. A Lightning Bolt takes out the Delver. That's one of the strong things about... Tony's list. It's actually who Kenton lost to in the finals. Unfortunately, both players from the store in Baltimore had to play each other in the top eight. Kenton getting the worst of it there. The Black Saga Storm uses discard extremely well, or you can take a look at your opponent's hand, and if they have just a ton of counter spells and very little creature removal, you can strip the removal out of their hands and easily beat them down with those construct tokens. Rhinestone, Found, Combo decks that can use Urza Saga to find combo pieces. Very scary, frustrating for control decks to play against. Just so much value, uncounterably, in traditional means. Orcish Bowmasters have amassed a little bit of an army. And here's a Bowmaster in response, which gets Force of Willed. And I, as I recall, that is not a play that I loved to see. Turbo Bowmaster. And may have come from a little bit of a concern for time. There wasn't a ton of time left in the round. These have been two really big games. Oh, and there we go. So the Force of Will expended, and Painter shows up unchallenged, no more counters, and Aiden loses in the blink of an eye there, the start of the event. Thank you for watching. For more magic from ELD's Time Vault games, be sure to subscribe and check out more videos just for you over here.